not that. Mm. Oh, oh, she she looks so gorgeous, and I'm attracted mm, to her. Gotcha. But rather wow. that she has that mysterious, oh. you know, aspect to herself. 아무런 정보 없이 선생님 생각을 말하는 거죠. 수수께끼 uh-huh. 같은 미소 이런 것도. 왜냐면 너무 그런 걸 듣고 나서 보니까 음. 그런 거 같지. 음. 만약에 안 듣고 봤으면은 좀 전혀 다른 관점에서 보지 않았을까 싶어서. When I when I saw her the the portrait when I was in elementary school, oh. I was like, okay, all right, well, so. I uh, like the mixture of the colors, like the color combination, and uh, there was there was something to the picture, oh, so I felt uh, wow. drawn to the picture. Gotcha. But I didn't think that she was beautiful. Oh, okay. Yeah, so wow. I was like, oh, there's something to this picture, um, and there must be a and and she looks like one of the uh, like a, she she belongs to a nobility, uh, like she, mm. she yeah she she had this like. Elegant posture mm. and you know like wow. uh, that look, right? Gotcha. Yeah, that's what I thought. But then, um, yeah, I, I thought she she looked noble. Oh. I think that that's what I thought. Oh, that's right. 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 Oh, Uh, she, uh, he makes a uh, 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 and <laughs> 밑에다가 약간 성적인 농담 막 내가 뜨거워요. Uh, I took that that is oma, not omaju. Uh-huh. Maybe parody. Uh-huh. More like. Uh-huh. So, 뒤샹도 나 저랑 좀 비슷한 생각을 하지 않았을까. Uh-huh. 아, 그런 생각을 해봤어요. 저는. Uh-huh. 모르잖아요. 뒤샹이 그런 생각을 했는지는. Uh-huh. 근데 그게 오마주라는 느낌보다는 약간 약 올리려고 그림을 바꾼 것 같아요. 호수염이가 uh-huh. 막 밑에다가 뭐 내가 내 엉덩이가 뜨거운가 그거 뭐 이렇게 적어놨대요. 음. 그래서 좀 그분도 좀 좋지 않게 보고 왜냐면 마스터가 만든 게 마스터피스라고 하셨잖아요. 그러니까 음. 유명해지고 나서 만든 거라서 다 이쁘다고 하는 게 아닌가 아. 뭐 이런 생각 어. 하지 않았을까? Yeah, 어. so um, that's different than the beauty itself, right? So there's beauty and then the uh, perceived beauty. Uh, there's beauty. This is what I think. And then there's perceived beauty. And then um, I think there's uh, like a reputation, maybe. So. Reputation is common, right? Uh, 명성? 명성, oh, yeah. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes. So then. Um, When you have no name, like you're on the street and just drawing, and people just look at you and oh okay, this is just a street person doing the art. So when they're drawn to you, they are attracted to the beauty, I think, or they can be attracted uh, drawn to you by perceived beauty because. This is innate, innate beauty. Uh, and then uh, kind of, I would say. Could you speak Korean? Just one more time. Oh, right. It's ポンジェチョブラアンダウンデイコ。あ、クポンジェチョブラアンダウンデイコ。あの、クポンジェチョブラアンダウンデイコ。あの、クポンジェチョブラアンダウンデイコ。あの、クポンジェチョブラアンダ
it's almost like I decide to. So I, I, I told my friend, you know what? Uh, she's not even beautiful, but he thinks that she is the beauty in the world. And then she think she said, well, he decided to see her that way. He decided to see her that way. Oh, then. Yeah. Oh. 내가 사랑하는 사람이니까 어, 아름답게 아름답다고 나는 결정했어. I love her, therefore she's beautiful. Or um, reputation might be what you said because of the brand name. Mm. All right, so any shirt with Ralph Lauren. 이거 상표 있으면 그냥. Right? Mm. Uh, people just buy if it's like a hundred bucks. A t-shirt, hundred bucks is high, right? Right? So, uh, or Leonardo da Vinci, you should go up there. You got da Vinci's up in there. Copy, you know, even mm. the copy is going to be like million dollars, right? So, well, I mean, uh, so whoever the copywriter, we're gonna. Um, so this is what I heard from like an actual mm. artist. I met an artist, mm. and he said, <clears throat> "Well, he's a pretty good artist, and he's very well known too." He said that, "Okay, you know what? He's got some skills with the um, with painting, but it's not that he. He says I'm not like a grand master. Like I'm not a master artist." But because of my name is already out there, and uh, in the past, mm. in the past, and, and I think it's it might be still true, there were sponsors. Yes, you're going to sponsor by this guy. Who? 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 Who supports you? Mm. Uh, like okay, so oh, what's your name? Oh, I like your art. Uh, do you want me to support you? <clears throat> so, like a very rich person comes around and says, oh, you know, I like your art, and I want people to um, come to observe, and they, I, I want you to, I want them to buy your your artwork. Mm. So then, oh, so you want to do an exhibition? Okay, I'll. Sponsor you, exhibition. So when you do exhibition, it's really expensive, right? Mm. You have to rent a place for several days mm. or even a month, or and then um, there's decoration that goes with it. Somebody has to maintain. It. So there's a lot of uh, uh, resources that and manpower that you need. And artists typically don't have that resource unless they inherit it from their parents. So then the patrons actually come around and they say, oh, we're going to throw this exhibition. Why don't you put out your artwork? So so then they, they're like, okay, let me gather all my masterpieces and I have to draw more. I have to mm. draw like 20 more mm. before the exhibition comes, right? So after a year, they're like throwing this uh, extravagant mm. exhibition. And in the past, um, uh, people... The nobility. Visual view on your assets, yeah. And they're the ones who are actually sponsoring too. So, visual view on your assets, I'm sorry. So, because, uh, you know, the uh, poor peasants mm. uh, and servants, they have to be working. They don't have time to go for art, you know, to, to enjoy art artwork. That's for nobility. Mm. So, the nobility is come. And they come and they're like, oh, I would want that piece of art on, on my wall mm. in the living room or in my castle. I want, I want like, this is this. Okay, how much is it? So it can't, it can't be like million, million dollars, right? Um, when they buy them, then what happens is um, he becomes, he, that's how he earns money. That's like part of business. So hi. <laughs> that's part of business too. Mm. So after he has, um, sold so many pieces, I think, you know, for fashion designers, it's the same good thing too, right? Mm. Some, some people are really interested in your products, uh, certain design, mm. and then they actually 
buy off that design or they can buy some of the products, right? Mm. Then they have more money, then they can draw more because they have more resources. Now they can hold their own exhibitions. Like after mm. building reputation, the reputation comes with what? By doing this. Mm. You have to get your products out um, and more people need to sponsor you. Mm. So after, so, so then um, it's, really important for you to find the right person. You need you need to meet a person mm. who can actually uh, pick you up. Mm. Pick up and then, and then so then you become a family person. Then after uh, rising to a certain level, you don't necessarily need other people's help. Like wow. now you're healthy enough and you know enough to to be able to hold your own I, 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 things all yeah and then um, People already know you, so mm. uh, you don't have to advertise too much. People will come to where you are, right? Mm. It's like a famous rock star's concert, uh, celebrity. You don't have to announce it too widely of, oh, so and so, oh, BTS is coming? All right, you know, everyone's going, right? Mm. Just like that. So you gain reputation and people are drawn to you. So that's going to happen. So then uh, what I heard. Is that this artist says, okay, I just drew random landscape. Like there's mm. mountain, trees, and you know, I didn't do too much. And at the top, there's like this house. And it's like a very simple artwork. It took 10 minutes for me to complete it. Mm. But you know what? Because it's well known, and people are like, they come and they're trying to find beauty in it. Oh, look at this. Well, aside from the fact that he's mm. pretty skillful, he is skillful, but then. And there must be a meaning behind this because he's always good job. Oh. Yeah, he's philosophical. He when he draws something, he always has mm. a meaning, right? So people try to make meaning out of that. Then although it took ten minutes, it looked people are just raving about your artwork. There are news articles. You know, people come to study. Like students come mm. to study, right? So then when that happens. Um, that's that's not the the actual beauty, but I would say more due to reputation. 음 그렇다고 해서 뭐 그림 나쁘지 않을 거잖아요. 그래, 그래. 왜냐면 이미 잘 그리니까 명성이 uh-huh. 있었으니까 uh-huh. 뭐 대단한 건알수 있지만 이미 좀 대단한 거잖아요. Yeah, so Picasso, right? Picasso made a good sponsor, right? And so do you remember Picasso? 그 처녀들이 뭐 있는데? 음. 어 so he drew something like that. I can't remember like how exactly it looked. It was it was a fish bone. Oh, right? I don't know. <laughs> fish bone on a plate or something like that. So he drew drew that, and that piece of artwork is like people study and they're like, yeah, there's a beauty. Like, mm. why did he use this kind of color? <laughs> why? Did he? So so he they study, but then it could have been my artist friend was saying. It could have been that he just had his lunch. Uh, mm. His lunch menu was fish, and afterwards he's like, "Okay, let me throw it away." Oh wait, oh this could be my artwork. So just he just, just sketched it. <laughs> mm. It's just a sketch work, sketch and then some color. Yeah, and then you know he sketched it and put some color on it, bright colors. I, I think he also uses like bright colors, and then all of a sudden it becomes a masterpiece. So he said that. To any standard, if you go to like an art exhibition, some of the um, artworks, I just wonder how did it, yeah, what, what's the beauty about this? Oh. Like, it does, I, I can make it, like with my left hand, I, I can make that happen, right? Oh, <laughs> there, 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 are, there are artworks that we are not really impressed about. And oh, how, did it, how did it make it into the museum? Yeah, why, why do people say so many? Things about so many good things about um, the artwork. I don't understand, right? Yeah, exactly. They may not have put thoughts into it. Mm. My friend is saying. My mm. friend is honestly saying. It's just that these fam- fam- famous people just threw it out. You know, threw out something. It might have taken like five minutes mm. <laughs> for them to come up with this artwork instead of some people actually spend two years. Mm. You know, trying to come up with an artwork mm. very explicit. Artwork. Some people like Sistine Chapel. I don't know how many years. Is that fifteen years? I, I don't know. So mm. anyway, so some of the construction artwork, you know, 
that it takes like decades mm. versus these people just came up with this like quick in, in five minutes. I, I'm not criticizing Picasso. I'm just like, giving you an example. Mm. But so that that's the that's that due to reputation rather than actual beauty or perceived even perceived beauty. Because when a lot of people will perceive that as not beautiful, but because of its reputation, it's considered as beautiful, right? So I don't know. Th th these are just my thoughts. Like no way. Mm. Yeah. These are just my categories. Um, oh, uh, Yeah. But first, the beauty do. Of course, your eyes change, right? 그, eyes change do. Mm -hmm. I love her. 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 I love I just think that why do we talk about beauty at all? Because there's something there there's something called beauty. There there is beauty, mm. right? Uh, there's beauty in this world, for example. Um, when we go out to the yeah, um, I, I love the nature. Mm. Do you do you like mountains? Yeah? Oh, no, do you like mountains? Yeah. Yeah, it's like sometimes breathtaking. Mm. Oh, all the trees. Grass after the rain, like I, I didn't realize how California was so beautiful. Like, mm. so in front of my mo mom's condo, there's like a hill, and the the hill was like so brown because because of the droughts. But it rained so much this year, and the grass started to you know come up, and the leaves started to come out, and oh, they're so beautiful. And when I see them, it's like. Oh, I didn't realize that this area was so beautiful. So, and then uh, Yellowstone, like where? What is some of the what? What are some of the places that you visited that were so beautiful, Helen? Uh, National Sequoia. Oh, Sequoia. Ooh. Yeah. Redwood. Red. I've heard Sequoia. So it was like yeah, Sequoia is so beautiful, and they have like giant trees, right? Yeah. And you can't even go inside the tree. Like some of them have been burnt, and you can drive through the tree. Oh, whoa! Yeah, it's just breathtaking. And yeah, so Grand Canyon, Yellowstone, uh, Teton, Teton Mountains. Okay, and the oceans are so beautiful, right? If you go to Hawaii, Hawaiian Beach. Yeah, um, it's just so every corner they have a different color, although it's the same ocean. So beautiful. So uh, anyone will go there and they'll be like, wow, right? Anyone. So I, I haven't seen anybody who goes to Hawaii and they're like, hmm. I don't know why people uh, like Hawaii so much. There's nothing out here. You know, I've never heard anybody who is like that, right? So there's something called beauty. There, there's, there's beauty. Uh, that is actual, that is real, uh, that most people would agree that there is, right? Yeah, so there's actually beauty. Otherwise, we wouldn't be talking about it. Yeah, so then it's, it's, it's real. I would say it's real. It's real. But then, uh, this. Yes, can change because this was because of your your perception, your decision, your perception. Your own perception. Okay, for example, like this. Okay, so when we were little, uh, so kids, what kids pick when they go to a store, um, what they pick as toys. Pictures, picture books, clothes. Oh, mommy, this is so beautiful. Okay, so let's say you have a daughter. Okay, uh, your four-year-old daughter uh, goes to the store. Oh, look at this Cinderella dress. I want to wear that. Um, or uh, your son might say, I mean, son, you know, not stereotypically. So, have you seen this like uh, kids' clothes? Like you wear this 
hooded jacket. Little kid's jacket. Hooded jacket with like big ears. You look like a bear. Like a pooh bear. Oh, oh, this is so cute. Like I, mommy, this one. Funny this. So to their eyes, that's beautiful, right? But after 30 years, you turn 35. And you don't go to a store and you, you probably don't, unless it's like, you know, a, a, a costume day. Uh, you wouldn't pick, pick out that like bear jacket, you know, bear um, hooded jacket and say, oh, this is so cute and attractive, like I want this for myself, right? So as you grow older, your perception changes. Your standards change. Mm. And then, uh, this is very interesting. Okay, so at the beginning, beauty is very, um, it's powerful. You know, people look at you one more time if you're beautiful, right? People gather around you if you're beautiful, mm. men, or, men or women. But uh, after getting married, of course, even before you get married, okay, so the moment you're attracted to that person because of the outer beauty, but you get to talk with that person, spend time, and you get to see the inner beauty, right? Mm. So inner beauty has more depth to it. Mm. Like the uh, outer beauty is only skin depth. Mm. And it can change because after so many years, you're, you're going to get, like men or women, they all get more ugly. Is that true? More, mm. more older. But inner beauty, you can have more inner beauty as you grow older. So like your outer beauty is gone, but your inner beauty starts shining and people are like, oh, that person has a beautiful heart. Mm. More people are attracted to that person than skin depth beauty. Mm. You know what I mean? And, and skin depth beauty, maybe more people can be drawn to that person, but then uh, that's only temporary versus if you have inner beauty, people will be uh, drawn to you and they want to be around you all the time. Right? So inner beauty, outer beauty. You saw both inner beauty and outer beauty. After so many years, it doesn't matter how the other person looks like. Well, I mean, mm -hmm. a little bit maybe, but you know, not 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 too much, because your daily relationship is more important. It it, it affects you more. So then, uh, one day you used to always complain about your wife. Oh, my wife doesn't just she just doesn't look the way I want her to look. Right? And you're frustrated and you've been complaining. <laughs> you've been, okay, do this and do that for me. But after a while, you uh, saw that one day you woke up and you're like, you know what, this woman that I got married to, after I got, having gone through so many trials and she could have deserted me, but she stays with me, she loves me. Oh, she looks so beautiful. Right? So you're, your perceived beauty has changed. Although she may look the same, she may, she may not have changed, but your eyes have changed. Oh, she loves me. I love her. She's so beautiful, right? Or, I hope this does not happen. Yeah, when you get married and then uh, you, were, you thought she was just the beauty uh, of the pin pinnacle of beauty. And then um, after so many years, uh, you know, she, she doesn't have that inner beauty. The reason she looked so beautiful is because uh, she didn't care about anybody else. Oh, I'm just making it, making it so dramatic. She didn't care about anybody else. She didn't care about anything else but, but her outer beauty. She was beauty. Yeah. Beauty, the person is so. But the question is, the beauty is able to see the beauty. Right. I guess. 저도 옛날에 아. 못 알아봤던 것 같아요. 어떤 아. 사람의 매력을. 아. 근데 이제 시간이 지나면서 저도 어떤 음. 익스피리언스를 쌓이잖아요. 음. 그러면서 
그러면서 이제 사람들 보는 시각이 선관이 바뀌면서 저는 개인적으로 본질적이라고 생각하는 것들 못 보고 지나친 경우들이 많다는 생각이 들더라고요. 그래서 그 뷰티가 중요한 것도 있지만 바라보는 사람도 중요하지 않나요? Yeah. 궁금해서 물어요 Yeah. So perceived beauty has to do with yourself. Uh. Who is watching the other person? So yourself. Perceived beauty. 이분 어 본질적인 것도 예쁘다고 생각 못했던 것 같아요. Yeah. 아까 말씀하신 것처럼 자연도 옛날에는 이쁘다고 생각을 못했는데 바뀌게 되고 근데 아, 그런 거는 보는 사람이 막혀 있으면은 아, 예. 못 보지 않나 본질적 아무리 본질적인 것도 예. 그렇죠 right. 아무리 본질적인 것도 right. 그렇죠 그렇죠 we don't get to look around and one day we're like you get sick and 어. you're in bed 맞아요. you can't work anymore 음. Then your eyes are open. Oh, why did why I've been missing this whole thing? 음. 뭐 사람은 펄시브라고 할수 있는데 자연 같은 거는 약간 본질적인 약 이쁜 거죠, 그래요. 사람도 있죠. 아 사람도 있죠. 아, 어, 진짜. 어, 진짜. Uh, people, there are beautiful people. Oh. So not everyone may agree, right? Oh. Yeah, different people have different standards, but there is something that is 음. that is beautiful. 그렇군요. Yeah. So anyway. So beauty is a is a is not just the outer surface, right? Not just the outer surface, but outer, but uh, it's inner. Yeah. So beauty, when you so I think we need to define beauty. So when you say beauty, what do you mean by that? It, mm. It's not just the what we see on the outer surface, but it could be. So. Um, artwork can be beautiful, but um, people who help others, right? Mm. So, yeah. So there was a there was a, a son and daughter, a son and da- a son and dad. Dad had certain illness, and so he needed to have liver transplant. Mm. And so this is a short story. So like my friend, he um, actually donated his liver, like part of his mm. liver for his dad. And so they were both on the uh, hospital bed, and they were all um, anesthetized. And he said that it was too, like so painful because it had to be uh, through the spine. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure he was screaming, yelling. But he did that, and he had this big scar, like, like mm. stitches after he transplanted the you know, liver for his dad. So he, his dad lived, and he had this huge scar. And when he posted that on Facebook, oh, this guy has such a beautiful heart, right? So that's beauty too, although he has. Ugly scar mm. right now. That act was so beautiful. Yeah. So then, um, beauty is a broader concept than just the colors and shapes, right? Yeah. Thanks for like you're still so thoughtful. <laughs> Thanks for um, asking that question. So let's start with the word fair, shall we? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for creating beauty, and you are the God of beauty and creativity, and you're the God who gives us a good heart. Father, I ask you that your spirit will minister to us, O God, in this classroom. We surrender to you because you lead us and guide us to the right place, Lord. Uh, Speak to us today and inspire us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Yeah, so um, we talked about chapter three, um, chapter four, um, I, I'm kind of flipping, uh, chapter four, we can actually visit that next week, but let's go over chapter five first. Is that too small? Can you read? Helen, do you have your book? Yeah. Very nice. Um, <laughs> Okay. 
Can you can you read? Yeah, it, is that readable? Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's read. Uh, can you read uh, Deuteronomy six? The uh, the entire paragraph that we're going to. Um, today we're talking about uh, Jesus' teaching. I mean, this whole thing is about Jesus' teaching, right? But loving the Lord your God, right? Okay. Okay. Go ahead. These are the commands, the praise and love, the Lord your God directed Moses that you will observe in the land as you are passing by Jordan to pass it, so that you, your children, your children after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping all his decrees and commands that I give you, and so that you may enjoy long life. Hear Israel and be careful to obey so that it may go well with you and that you may increase greatly in a land full of flowing with milk and honey with milk and honey just as the Lord the God of your ancestors promised you. Mm -hmm. Did you hear all Israel? Hear all Israel. The Lord our, our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you home, in your home and when you walk along the road. When you die and when you get up, Tie, tie the sad symbol on your hand and bind them on your forehead. Write them on the door frames of your house and your gate. Yeah. All right. So yeah, basically the message is this. So key message here, oh, it's about commands. And we don't necessarily like commands because um, ever since we were little, our parents have been commanding us like, do this and do that, don't do this, right? So we're kind of tired of it. And sometimes we can mis misunderstand God's commands, but God's commands are different than um, what, what people say as our, our parents or even at your workplace, like your uh, your boss, or you know, it's different than that. So commands and um, love the Lord your God. So oftentimes, you know, God compares, like, uh, He illustrates His love for us, His relationship with us, um, as like a, a covenant marriage relationship.
Yeah, so there's a, a professor that I uh, that taught me. Like I, I took his course back in my um, seminary years, and um, yeah, he has this uh, he has this interesting British accent, and um, he uh, had been married for twenty maybe thirty years, even more. I don't know, maybe thirty or thirty five years, um, and he he would come to the chapel. So like. And every Wednesday we would have a chapel, and all the professors and uh, students actually came in. And he would uh, bring in his wife on a wheelchair. You know, so he would just push the wheelchair and come in, and um, they would sit together to uh, do the service together, and they would sing and pray, and you know. Um, and I thought, wow, he's really faithful. You know, um, he has like. All his hair is like quite white. You know, he, he is in his he was in his probably like sixties, um, and his wife also. And um, one day I happened to just uh, read an article written by him. He he actually wrote an article like how they met and um, how they began to uh, live with with each other at Hudson and Mark. So he got he met her. He knew that she was developing Parkinson's disease, and he still decided to get married to her, knowing that there's such a risk, right? Um, it's not easy for you to get married to someone who, who you know as having an illness, right? Parkinson's disease, I know. Parkinson's you don't know. So you become kind of stiff, right? Um, and, uh -uh. So you become more and more stiff. Like a, oh. you were able to do everything, but one day, oh, my feet are not moving. Mm. Oh, another day, oh, my back is not moving. And so, if if it becomes really severe, you have to lie on the bed and you can't move. Mm. So that's why his wife was on the wheelchair. But so different from single in gun. No, no, no. Yeah, they they have a single in gun. I don't die. I'm not dead. 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 Yeah, so oh. they have a brain, they can taste, and they can move a little bit. Oh. So at, at an earlier stage, you, you're going to talk. Um, mm. And she was walking around fine. She even had babies. Yeah. Mm. So, but then after, after a while, it became more and more severe, and she became uh, catatonic and not being able to move, and so she was on the wheelchair. And so he asked his wife, uh, his husband, her husband, she, he had to actually take care of her for everything. So basically, washing her every day, right? Feeding her, um, changing clothes, and, uh, uh, you know, he wanted her to enjoy outside. So, so she is on a wheelchair, and he would just uh, push the wheelchair, go out to see the beautiful nature, um, nature the trees, and rivers, right? And then she she loved ice cream. So um, on a good day when she is able to kind of move better, then uh, oh honey, let's go out for ice cream. So like um, he took her to an ice cream store and fed her, and he was just oh I love her so much. Wow, this that's very special. How many people are able to do that today, right? Um, 근데 좀 궁금한 게 이게 uh -huh. 솔직하게 현실적으로 물어보는 거야. Uh -huh. 이런 한 장면은 너무 아름다울 수 있지만 이게 몇 년은 반복될 수 있는 거잖아요. 더 심각해 심각해질 수도 있고 상황이 uh -huh. 남녀 모설 떠나서 얘기하는 거예요. Uh -huh. 어떤 사람 아프고 uh -huh. 지켜주는 입장에서 지금이야 이한 문장이기 때문에 하루 뭐 일주일이니까 아름다울 수 있겠지만 그렇게 몸이 굳어져 버리는 게 과연 저는 궁금한 거야. 그냥 뭐 저도 버리진 않는데 uh -huh. 과연 그렇게 내가 10년 20년을 내 일도 있어요. 돈을 벌어야 또 케어해 주잖아요. 그러니까 항상 사랑이라는 건 너무 아름답긴 한데 현실적에서는 이게 과연 하, 맞는가? 왜냐면 1 년도 아니고 1 0 년이 돼 버리면. Yeah, he, he served her for like 30, 어. 35 years. 어, 진짜요? And he's a professor. He's very busy. He was, I think, he was a full timer. 어. And he's a world famous theologian. 학자, theologian. So he publishes 어. books. Um, his articles are on like uh, well-known, uh, well-reputed journals, you know, uh, mm. journals, 
and he's creating papers. I was in his class. He's an Old Testament scholar. He has he had like 30 students, like 20, 30 students in a classroom, and he had multiple classes going on. So I don't know how he managed. While wow. raising, yeah, no, she told me. raising oh. his kids, because his wife was not very capable, oh. and he had to raise kids too. I don't know. I don't know how he did it, but wow. and he's he was a profound scholar. Yeah, he, he did a lot of research. So um, when I read his article, I used to see him. 만약에 그걸 못 한다고 그 이사람처럼 대단한 일을 못 한다고 만약에 선언하면 그 나쁜 사람이 되는 건가? 저 궁금해서. No, no, I'm, I'm not saying that. 어, 그냥 궁금한 거 있었는데 물어본 거야. Uh-huh. 근데 왜냐면 너무 대단한 거니까 일도 많은데 음. 그렇게 할수 있다. 근데 어떤 사람은 음. 못할 수도 있는 거잖아. 음. I'm just talking about 어. the hard attitude. Yes, not not the things that she did for her, but the uh, heart behind it. 와, 대단한 거 진짜. Think about it. Okay, 오. so the major thing is. <웃음> 와. He he got married to her knowing that she had a Right? Mm. Knowing what was going to happen. Uh, although he might not have anticipated the whole thing. Maybe he had a wish. Oh, yo, I wish she is healed. Mm. And maybe she's going to get better. Mm. Well, she even had, had, had babies. So, oh, it's a good sign. Maybe he went through ups and downs. Mm. And later on, it was not getting better. It was getting worse. But number two, he still got married to her. And he kept his wedding vow. Uh, it's a covenant. And therefore, I'm going to stay married. She can't do anything for you. She mm. can't cook for you. When, when you compare yourself, you have other friends and their wives are cooking, inviting friends, they're having parties. I can't, right? Uh, while they're enjoying, like, other, so husband and wife, they obviously mm. sit together, right? I can't do that, she's sick, right? And can you imagine it's not just one week, two months, oh. or one year? <laughs> 30 years. 거잖아, so I'm pretty sure he had to pray. I, I don't know. I, I, I didn't interview him, but I, I'm pretty sure um, he had to pray to oh. God for help. God, this is too hard. Like, I have to raise kids and take care of mm. my home, and I have to study and work, and I have to take care of her. Like, how am I supposed to do all that? Yeah? Uh, Lord, give me strength. I'm pretty sure he turned to God, right, for help. But even then, I'm I'm talking about the spirit. Now, I'm not saying that we all should be Superman like him. Oh. But I'm saying, oh, he must have really loved her, mm. and he must have decided every day, decided every day. I'm gonna love her. I'm gonna stay married to her, and I'm gonna wash her. I'm gonna feed her, I'm gonna cook for her, clean for her while I do my study and teaching and creating papers. He literally probably made the decision. And it may, like, why does he even do that? Because nobody is telling him, like, you should do this. Like, nobody's mm-hmm. forcing him. It's his own choice. Sure. Yeah. So then, uh, what motivated? I love her, not just this much, but with my whole being, I'm going to love her. I'm going to love her with all my being. So he was making that, I'm pretty sure he had to make that decision daily. So then why I'm so impacted by that article that he wrote is because, well, uh, as a student, I knew him. So it was. It means more than like a random article about some, somebody that I don't know. I knew him. Now, God is saying. So I, I think it's a very good illustration. That's how how much God loves us. Yeah, God the Creator, God the husband. Because if He calls Himself as a husband, He calls His creation, human beings, as His. Bride, this is my bride. My bride, I love you. And didn't Jesus die on the cross saying that I love you this much, right? I love you this much. That's how he died, showing us 
but he really loves us, that he loves us till the end. And the, uh, his love is endless, actually. Yeah, so before, why are we able to uh, love him? We're just loving him back. Okay, so, um, yeah, so back, back, in, uh, back when I was in college, so, uh, yeah, I felt really gloomy. I felt really dark. Um, around uh, the 18 years of age. So um, I had a good high school years, but there was always dark, darkness in, inside my heart because uh, my family was going through a lot. My family had major issues. I thought that was helpless. Nobody was going to change that. And it was pretty bad daily. Um, da daily, I felt hurt and uh, Hard to explain. So, so my, my family, my family had a lot of relationship issues. There was violence. Uh, there was hatred. There was betrayal. It, it was really hard. Yeah, the enemy has done that. Yeah. So then, because it was ever since I was little, I saw their conflicts and. It was getting worse. <laughs> there was no peace. When I, I didn't want to come back home. Like when I went to school, I didn't want to come back home. So then um, I thought to myself, okay, people say, you, you're going to know. Like if I ask questions, people say, oh, you're going to know when you become an adult. Okay. So I was hoping, okay, if I turn 18, become an adult, I will somehow understand and grasp what this problem is about that looks in, enormous and I'll be able to have a solution for that. When I became 18, I was so, uh, I lost all my hope because nothing changed and I did not have the wisdom to understand why the problem was there. I didn't have the power to resolve the conflicts. Uh, it was going to be the same for the rest of my life. I felt like that was my fate, and um, all right, it's it's better to end my life rather than continuing because uh, every day I had to fight with something. I had to fight for life. I had to. Um, it was just very hard to study, um, do anything. I couldn't meet friends. Um, it was just terrible. So. So then I decided to commit suicide. Yeah. But so I was completely broken and I um yeah, life was meaningless. Do you remember Eric? Uh, we talked about I meaningless. Me mean meaningless. Meaningless. Uh, no, no, not meaningless. Yeah. Meaningful. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, but we I say meaningful. Of course. You make it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I like your positive attitude, mm. but last week we talked about like how this uh man of wisdom. Solomon said, 뭐 근육을 해도 되고 뭐 이렇게 얘기를 하더라고요. 긍정적인 친구 어차피 이 인생은 허무하니까 막 살아도 되고 좀 이렇게 낫고 살아도 되고 이렇게 얘기를 많이 하더라고요. 제가 본 거에서 근데 이미 죽음을 그렇게 전제를 갖고 얘기를 하는 거는 신을 무시하고 있는 거예요. 신이 없다고 생각하니까 신이 우리를 설계 놨는데 만들어 놓고 죽음을 왈가 왈부 하고 있다는 거는 신을 그러니까 이미 없다고 생각하는 것 같더라고요. 저는 개인적으로 이미 우리 죽는다고 신이 설계를 해놨는데 왜 그거를 의미 없다고 생각하고 왜, 왜 죽음을 헛되다고 생각하는지 납득이 안 되네요. 이미 그렇게 설계가 되어 있는데. 창조했잖아요. Yeah, yeah. So, so what he was saying, uh, so that was his beginning. He, he said meaningless, meaningless, meaningless. And the end of his chapter, mm. the last word, is this. Therefore, mm. uh, 
enjoy the blessing each day mm. in gratitude, right? Mm. Um, and honor God. Keep His commands. Commands. Uh -huh. That was His mm. obey His commands. That was his conclusion. Meaningless, meaningless, meaningless. Mm. And his conclusion is, therefore, Blessing. keep mm. God's commands. So what he's saying is, while well, he enjoyed his life, he's not saying everything is bad. He's not saying that. Mm. And I'm not saying that either. But uh, he found out at an uh, old age, close to his death, because when you are quote, near death, your thoughts change. Oh, what is impo really important? Right? Mm. What is really important? He started to think. And then he, he instructed himself, Oh, the things that I thought was very important, all the women and concubines that he had, the land he conquered, the great reputation and power he had, you know, even the wisdom that came from God. Mm. It's not, it, it's meaningless unless, unless you connect with God. Mm. You connect with God unless you enjoy that uh, under His uh, sovereignty. 그러니까 제가 말하고 싶은 얘기는 뭐야? Mm -hmm. 신이 있다고 믿으면 이렇게 하라는 거잖아. Mm -hmm. 근데 왜 신이 있다고 믿으면서 죽음을 이렇게 슬퍼하는지 모르지. 왜냐면 신이 죽음까지도 설계해 놓은 거고 우리를 이렇게 편하게 만들었는데 죽음이 헛되다고 하면서 신을 믿으라고 하는 게더 납득이 안 되네. 죽음이 헛되다는 게. So because we're gonna, so what he was saying. 죽으니까 헛되다고 하는 거죠. 모든 게 죽으니까 우리가 죽음 앞에서 아무것도 없으니까 허무하다고 하는 거라고 생각이 들거든. 제가 제가 읽어본 거는. 그러니까 죽음이 있기 때문에 우리가 허무하다고 얘기하는 것 같아요. 근데 신을 믿으면서 그런 얘기를 할수 없는 게 신이 우리의 죽음까지 탄생부터 죽음까지 설계를 해놨는데 그거를 부정하는 꼴이 아닌가 허무주의자들이. 근데 막 허무주의자면서도 신 믿는 사람도 많잖아요. 근데 난 이게 납득이 안 되는 거야. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, about physical death, like I, I have to think about it, but it becomes too complicated. Uh, so, what he's saying is, he used to think, so Solomon used to think that all these things, he would be satisfied by doing all these things. So, so initially, he started right with God. He said, God, give me divine wisdom. I need to roll over this country mm -hmm. and so many people will be under my leadership. I need that wisdom, Lord. So God was so pleased. He was like, oh, you're looking after other people. You're not wanting your own selfish desires. So therefore, I'm going to give you wisdom and wealth and power and the land and mm. everything. So he was given everything, which is great. It's a reward. But um, afterwards, mm -hmm. These things were so distracting. Mm. So it's like this. Uh, when a little child, like when we were little, uh, I don't know what your uh, fathers did, but my father, mm. although later on our family relationship became terrible, later on when I was little, I had very, very good memories, right? So uh, he would just come home so early. Um, other fathers may go, go for drinking and parties and things like that. He would just cut that off and then he would just come home with goodies, right? And we knew that, um, that he was doing that because he loved us, right? And so when he rings a bell, we're like, oh, Daddy! And then we just, we would just go and fling open the uh, door and do this. Give me a hug, Daddy, right? And he would lift us up and... Um, So he would just enjoy that, um, daddy, and then just kids running after him, right? Um, let's change the picture a little bit. All right, so uh, he knew that we loved watching things, right? So one day he bought a nice TV for us. My, my brother really loved this like action animation, you know, and my, my, my sister, older sister, we really love this uh, princess animation. So we're all watching TV, okay? So one day, the bell rings, okay? And dad bought us a TV because he, he loved us, right? It's, a, it's an expression of my love for you. The bell rang, 
Nobody ran after him. Nobody said, Daddy, nobody opened the door. He had to ring the bell three times because we were watching the TV that he gave us as a gift. So we were more fo fo focused on the gift than the giver. So finally, mom is like, oh, he's like, what's happening with you guys? Open the door. And she opened the door and dad comes in and he's like, all right, I brought the goodies and I just, it was too heavy. And I like, what's going on here? And then he, he puts it on the ground and he comes in. We're all watching TV and we're like, you know, watching TV and he's like, oh, He's not even angry. He's like, oh, you guys, that looks fun. And then we're like, uh huh, daddy. You know? <laughs> so after that happened uh, a few times, he came in and he said, hey, guys, my mom actually had to turn off the TV. Uh, we, we didn't have remote back in those days. She turned it off. She said, stop watching TV. You know, what are you doing? And I think our dad was kind of hurt. Oh, I bought you guys TV and I bought goodies and you are more interested in these things. And so you forget about me. You know what I mean? So that, I think that might be what was happening to Solomon when he was given the wealth, power, prestige, women. Well, God didn't give him women. People submitted to his power and therefore he had women, which became a source of trouble. Um, mm -hmm. we're not designed to have more than one spouse, but he did. So then, um, that brought him a lot of trouble later. But anyway, so... Ah, so you know, 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 So, God's goal is, well, the, the way he created Adam, one Adam, one Eve, he didn't create men and men. Well, I'm getting into a great territory right now, I know. Women and women, and say, "Oh, get married. Yeah, um, I honor your marriage." No, he said he created one man and one woman, right? Um, he didn't create one man and five mm. women. He didn't create one woman and ten men and say, "All right, go ahead and get married." No. So, if we go back to how he designed things, then we see what marriage is about. 근데 그게 본질적으로 왜 문제가 될까? Anyway, so. 배우고 싶어서 물어보네. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I forgot what I was going to say. So, Solomon had everything. Mm. As a gift. God gave him as, as a gift. Mm. Right? But then, just like us, so fascinated by the TV, and we're like, we're so involved with that. We're like, Dad came in and we're like, uh huh, hi, Dad. You know, we're not even looking at it. Mm. Versus, before he did give us the TV, we would just go wild after him. Mm. Say, um, Daddy, welcome home. We missed you. Doesn't God want that? Well, wouldn't you want that for your own family? We want friends who give us attention. We want our family members to give us attention because that is part of love, right? We want to be loved. We want to love and want to be loved. God loves us so dearly and he wants us to love him back because that's a beauty. Um, but Solomon was like, oh, look at all these women. Look at all the gold that I have. Uh, I'm so busy doing stuff with them. I forgot about God. So that's what happened. So then, uh, when we forget about God, well, not only God is hurt, but the problem is uh, our lives are meaningful, our lives have a bearing and a sense of direction, and we can fulfill the meaningful purpose of God only when we are in that relationship with God. Yeah, unfortunately, when we forget about God, or when we don't know God, our life is becomes meaningless. Yeah, it becomes meaningless. Um, I know, I know, all of us have a good heart, and heart's intention, and some of us do good works. We help people. Uh, most of our, my students are great, and I appreciate them. But the reason I talk about Jesus is because without knowing God, and without 
uh, paying attention to him, our lives go uh, through the direction. In the end, we're going to look back and this is meaningless. What have I done? So that's what Solomon was talking about. He's not saying, oh, because we all die, it's everything is meaningless. He's not saying that. 어, 또 질문은 그게 아니라 uh-huh. 그 뜻을 얘기하는 게 아니라 그러니까 신이 있다고 믿으시잖아요. 음. 근데 신이 있다고 믿는데 왜 죽음에 대해서 이렇게 다들 무서워하고 받아들이지 못하는 걸 얘기하는 거예요. 그러니까 그게 그게 아니라 허무주의가 아니라 음. 신이 탄생부터 죽음까지 설계를 해놨는데 죽음 앞에서만 다들 막 죽으면 안될 것처럼 얘기를 하고 어, no, so 아니 이거 피가 so... 얘기하는 게 아니라 uh-huh. 우리가 말하는 거예요. 그가 그렇게 얘기했다는 게 얘기하는 게 아니라 우리 입장에서 우리도 신이 있다고 생각하는데 음. 선생님이랑 얘기를 나눠 보면 죽음에 대해서 좀 너무 무서워하시고 음. 뭐 그때 코로나 때 사람이 죽었다는 거에 대해서 좋다고 얘기하는 게 아니라 음. 그게 어떻게 보면 설계되어 있는 건데 그런 음. 거를 너무 무서워하고 두려워하고 부정하는 거는 이미 신이 음. 있다고 이해를 잘 못하신 거예요. 저도 오해하신 거예요. 왜? Yeah. So what I was saying is that uh, Especially when I was talking about Corona and many people dying, mm. I'm saying that we are depend. If it may be different timing, like at different time, mm. we're all gonna die. So I wanted to mm. bring you, bring that attention to you mm. that death can be for everyone, because you know, mm. uh, most of my students are young, and so they're not thinking about death. You know what I mean? So I wanted to bring that to your attention. Mm. That death can happen to anyone mm. at any age. That's, mm. That was my whole intention. Yeah, my intention is that I'm I'm not even thinking about death. Every day I'm busy working. You know what I mean? 근데 나이가 But, 들었다고 해서도 죽음을 생각하는 게 말이 안 돼. 그냥 살아가다가 언제 죽을지 모르는 거잖아. It's because you're mm. young and you're not thinking. So as you become older, say people in their 60s and 70s mm. and 80s, okay? Uh, Death is nearer. Some people just live like oh in their 20s. Yeah, I understand. But many people who are thoughtful start thinking about, oh, you know what? Look at my friends. Oh my, my friend just died. Oh, another friend just died. When when your close people start dying because of their age, death is mu- much mm-hmm. more closer. It's more more intimate to you mm-hmm. than before. Mm-hmm. Before you weren't even thinking. Oh, you know what? I'm so busy taking care of my business. Okay, mm. but one day your friend dies. You go to his funeral, and you're like, "Oh, I'm 63, and he's 63, and he died. I might die tomorrow." So uh, they start thinking about death more. Mm. That's why their perspective changes. Mm. Before, because it feels like they're gonna just live forever. They're investing in a lot of people. I mean, not not everyone. Say say for example, mm. some people like you know what? I got to invest more in stock. I got to you know buy more stuff. Mm. Uh, let's plan for better. Let's plan for better elderlyhood. Like I want to live my life in a luxurious house. Uh, I want to have like parties every night and things like mm. whatever, whatever that what they what they like. Okay, so they're thinking and spending a lot of time doing that. Oh. But one day, it just hits them. Oh, my friend died. Mm. I might die tomorrow. What's important to me? What's important to me? Of course, investing into business is important. But you know what? Ultimately, when I look back, so here's an example. King Alexander, the Great, Alexander the Great, Alexander the Great. So he conquered the the most the uh, vast territory. Mm. He is. Uh, one of the top guys in the whole human mm. history, you know, his name comes out in in the history books, and we had to study him, right? And so uh, he had great military powers. Um, he uh, conquered a vast land, and he he impacted so many people, so many nations, mm. right? Um, 
So people admired him, he, they, they feared him, he had so much. But then when he died, before on his deathbed, do you know what he said? Uh, when you make a coffin, because he knew he was going to die, when you make my coffin, uh, put two holes, like one hole on the left, one hole on the right, and put my arms out and bury me like that. Why? Why? Tell humanity that King, the great Alexander the Great, died empty handed. Mm. Right? So then, what, what was he thinking on his deathbed? I conquered the great, uh, vast territory. I became so powerful. People respect me. And he was a man of many, uh, much knowledge and mm. understanding. All these things I cannot take when I go, when I, when I die, he knew, he somehow felt mm. that there was something after physical death. Mm. He, he somehow knew, and I, I don't know, I, he was not a Christian, but he somehow knew that there was a, a, a life after that. Tell people that I went empty-handed. I couldn't take any of the positions. I couldn't take any of the countries. I, I couldn't take power. I couldn't take gold. I couldn't take anything. Tell people. Why? Because he wanted to, uh, he wanted people, the humanity, to understand that it is meaningless. After having conquered some, so the reason it was meaningless is because he didn't know Jesus. He didn't know God. One true God, he didn't have that relationship. And he had a lot. But what good is it? You lose your soul. Yeah, I'm saying this. You lose your spirit, but possess a lot of things. It's meaningless. So the same conclusion. Well, it's somehow mean, mean, it has some meaning. He conquered a lot of land. Uh, the, you know, uh, Greece and this, uh, there was cultural, uh, you know, cultural impact, great cultural impact, and we're so upsetting about him because his influence is great. Mm -hmm. So there is something that he did. There's something significant he did. He just couldn't take it with him when he died. So that's the that's the point that I'm trying to make. I'm not fearing that. I mean, you know, I, yeah, any hum human person, if, if somebody comes and you know. Uh, point to you with a gun, mm. you'll have fear, mm. I guarantee you, will we'll, we'll not want to die. Mm. So I have that fear, but I'm, when I bring out illustrations about mm. death, it's not because I hate it, it's not because mm. I'm afraid, mm. I want to bring to your attention because we are young, I mean I'm not young, but you guys are younger, and in that age, between 20 to 30, you, you're not thinking about death, you're thinking about, oh, how am I going to marry, get married? How am I going to have a nice house? How am I going to be successful as a business person or a lawyer or whatever, right? You're thinking more about that. So I want to bring to your attention because if you don't have that perspective in the end, so if you don't have the end in mind, we're going to go astray. So... So here's a starting point. And then here's the end. So um, I think I talked about this race mm. before. Because here's a starting point. And here's a finish line. We're running out of race. And so the rule is you start when the uh, gun goes off and you are supposed to end here. This is the ending point and actually um, there's a judge. Mm, how am I supposed to? Oh, it looks like a baker. Okay. <laughs> there's a judge. Um, we're going to stand before the judge. 
And he's going to actually, and I don't know why, why I'm drawing this. Okay, so I'm the judge, and he's going to actually say who, who the winner is, uh, who's going to go where. So, um, if we don't have, if, if we're not thinking about death every once in a while, you know, that we're going to die at some point, at one point, then we can, we may go astray, go somewhere else, out of nowhere. When we are supposed to, when God is leading us from here to here, God is leading. And he is leading us. Come on. Okay, come on. All right, let's let's go. Yeah, here. Oh no 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 not not right there. Oh come on here, because uh, uh that that road leads to destruction. If if you go that route, uh you know it, it's no good. Like you have to get there. Like this is this is something that I want you to do. Um, come on, come here. And they're like, no, uh, or you're not even saying no because you don't even realize that he's guiding you. You're like, well, what is this? Oh, well, let me just go on my own way. And you may end up in the wrong path. And that wrong path, you get lost. So, so it's a blessing, it's a blessing, and it's meaningful. If you follow God's guide, guidance, your creator, the one who made you fearfully and wonderfully, if you find him, if you find him and if you walk alongside, you're gonna get to the finish line and you're gonna have eternal life. But if you started your life and if you refuse the guiding hands of God or if you don't care or if you are not aware, you may live very diligently, you may even conquer the land, you may be very successful and people clap their hands, you're such a great person. And actually before the judge, you're lost and you lose and you'll be destroyed the consequences is that you'll be destroyed eternally eternal death and he's saying please don't go that way no please pay attention look i'm here you say that i don't exist you say that there are other gods there are different ways to get to the truth no, look at me. Don't get deceived. Come, come here, because I I want you to bear fruit and enjoy a, an abundant life. Meaning abundance, meaning uh, not just materialistically, but uh, live your life to the fullest in a meaningful way. How can you live your life meaningfully? Abundantly. If you can live that life and fulfill your purpose, how can you fulfill your purpose? Eric, I see that you are, you said that you're very busy. Mm. You're learning a lot of things. You're, you're curious in this classroom and you study on your own mm -hmm. by watching YouTube videos and um, news. Yeah, news and you read things and you are interested in art. Um, you discuss things with your friends mm -hmm. and uh, you know, uh, you engage in sports. Uh, you're creating your own business, right? Mm -hmm. You're preparing and creating yes. your own business. That's wonderful. I want to encourage you for that. Mm -hmm. Please. 
<laughs> but what is that all about? I'm not saying it's meaningless, oh. but how can you live a truly, so, so you want to fulfill your purpose. You, you said that uh, before you, you didn't really appreciate relationships. 그렇죠. 이거 하고 싶어도 이제 이거 정리해서 얘기하면 그거였던 거예요. Uh-huh. 죽기 때문에 무의미하다고 했잖아요. No. 아니에요? 아니면 더 얘기해. 죽기 때문에. So because we're gonna die, we want to think about what really lasts. 지속됩니다. Uh-huh. 그 죽기 때문에 지속되는 게 헛되게 되다는 게 죽어서 헛되게 되는 거 아니에요? 내가 뭘 뭔가 해도. So if you live according to His will, it is meaningful. Oh, you understand? Oh, I understand. 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 Oh, I 반대로 죽기 때문에 의미가 있다고 생각해요. Uh-huh. 왜냐하면 죽으니까 의미가 있는 거예요, 우리가. Uh-huh. 살아있으면 우리가 했던 것에 무슨 의미가 있겠어요? 그냥 이어져 나가는 거고 남겨지는 건 아니잖아요. 근데 이제 그래서 그 얘기를 하고 싶었는데 저거를 붙이면은 선생님 말씀도 이해가 되는 거예요. Yeah. Oh, I totally understand, but yeah. you may be last time I just uh-huh. don't know that. Yeah, you're, yeah. Mm. So, yeah, so I, I should have made it clearer, right? Thanks for asking that question. Uh, So, um, yeah, I don't want to make it more complicated. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, what he did, his life could have been very meaningful. And I'm not saying mm-hmm. that it's completely meaningless because he, isn't, he made an impact. He just couldn't take it with him. <laughs> mm-hmm. He made an impact, and, but he had to just leave everything. Um, if he knew the Lord and did... Things according to his will. Say he conquered the mm. vast uh, land. If he knew God, he would have given him a different purpose. Mm. Same thing, doing the same thing but different purpose. 이제 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 확실히 이해됐어. Yeah. Oh. So so I'm not God, right? Mm. So, uh, and so uh, mm. his work was in vain to some degree because he didn't know God, right? And he, he felt it was meaningless. He, he felt it was meaningless. And that's why he said, put my hands, uh, put my arms out of my coffin so everyone knew, well, pe- people will see that Alexander the Great went, died empty handed. I'm not sure what he regretted. He probably regretted, oh, I should have taken better care of my loved ones. Maybe I should have loved my wife. I should have loved my children instead of um, spending all my time doing expeditions you know? um, maybe I, I should not have been so harsh over people build these buildings build that bridge you know build that road and so many people died on the way maybe I should not have done that maybe um, yeah he was just regretting. My life, it's in vain. What, what, what did I live for? Because I, you know, some people are dying and they sometimes realize they were missing God. Other people just die. <laughs> so if you notice at an early age, oh, 
It's a major blessing. Yeah, if you, if you know this at an early age, it's a it's the biggest treasure that you can find. Because then your life, you will waste your life less. When I met the Lord, um, around 18, but more clearly when I was 21, I looked back and I was like, oh, I wasted 18 years of my life. I wish I had known God. Then my life would, I, I would not have lost those years, right? Well, God redeemed those years too, but um, it would have been much better had I, had I known him personally. Had I known him personally and followed his guide, I would not have felt so lost. I would not have, I would, I would have had an easier time coming out of that depressive mode. I would have had a much easier time. I would not have to suffer that much. Like, yeah. I don't know God. Um, I don't know if it makes sense to you. Yeah, so eternal life. Eternal life is a gift, and it is actually, it is equal. Yeah, this is a kind of a. Yeah, I have a question. Yeah, I feel like God will be redeeming those years that. You said the word lost. Uh, uh -huh. um, what do you mean by that? Hmm. So, yeah. Uh, it would have been much better if I had known him ever since I was two years of age. Five years of age, right? You could know God. You could have a personal relationship with him. It would have been better. But then, um, I thought my 18 years, I, I wanted to cut it off. Before Christ, I don't want my life before. Because it was just uh, full of pain and uh, destruction and um, it's meaningless. But then, uh, ever since I met God, He redeemed in such a way that, first of all, He healed me from my brokenness. He allowed me to actually leave home, leave my family. It was not my, um, it was not entirely my decision. But anyway, I, I had to leave home. Um, and leaving home was actually gave me perspectives on my family and I was able to help them better by praying for them, praying for them, visiting them every once in a while, uh, forgiving and demonstrating Christ's love, love to them. Um, God healed my heart from my past wounds and then it became kind of a strength. Uh, people came to me and they would share difficult stories of their lives. I was broken this way, I was broken that way, I don't know what to do. Um, then that became my resources, like, oh, you know what? I had a broken childhood too. My family was also broken, you know? But Christ ministered to my heart this way. And look, I was shattered before, but I'm transformed and healed. If I could be like this, you could be like that. So I, it became a, a message of hope for people. And I could empathize. So I guess I, I tend to have a better talking time, conversations with those people who have suffered before rather than those people who lived a comfortable life. Um, so that could be my weakness too. Like I could, I wish I could be a little more casual and, you know, <laughs> um, I'm a fun person in a way too, but anyway, so then um, it was not completely lost because I met Christ. Uh, I was healed and transformed and I have a better perspective on my family. Oh, it's not that my family was horrible, but they had good intentions, but the enemy really picked us apart. He really destroyed our family. So it's the Satan behind, my dad, Satan behind, my sister, it's not them. I should love them. I should help them see, gain perspectives, and wake them up so that they won't go down, continue to go down the path of destruction. So that I came to have the perspectives. So um, although it still hurts, hurts, not, not 
totally. When, when, when my memory is brought back, uh, it's still painful, but I'm not in pain. I'm not living in pain. And um, now I can help other people. You're at peace with it. Yes. I have peace with it. Uh, but it took a lot of work, though. Yeah. I wasn't just sitting there worshiping God and then magically <laughs> everything was resolved and I'm psychologically healed. No, I had to uh, pray with him, read some books, process my experiences. I even studied psychology. Well, psychology wasn't entirely helpful. Uh, marriage and family therapy in a Christian setting. And that was really helpful. Mapping out my family relationships, parallels, bringing to God. Sometimes God just miraculously healed me. Most most of it is miracle, but I had to do my work. It was hard. Yeah. So when you were like deviating, I mean, not necessarily you deviating from the path, but because um, you met God later on, mm -hmm. it was more challenging for you to mm -hmm. get back on a line that mm -hmm. God wanted yeah. you from the very first beginning. Yeah. Exactly, because I was already on this path. I was like so far away from that. I was like right here. I'm like, oh, where am I going? Where am I going? I feel lost. I feel lost. I don't know where I'm going. That's exactly the question that I was asking uh, around 18 years of age. Where am I going? What is my life about? Why do I have to work so hard daily, uh, study, even study hard? You know, I, I, I was getting good grades, what what good is it? You can't take it anywhere, right? So, um, well, I mean, good grades are going to, I don't know, if there's like an examination that you have to pass to be certified, it's gonna help on all that, but you know, that's a minor benefit. Like, in the end, what is life about? That was the question that I had. What's your life about? Where am I going? And I feel lost, but, God took my hand, gradually showed me, and then because I was so used to going this path, and especially I was so used to leading my own life. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, this is what I'm familiar with. <laughs> oh, this is the path that I have been going. Like, what? I have to go that way? That that feels backward. That and feels it's harder than <laughs> you just illustrating right now. It's yeah, way harder. Yeah, what? Oh, this is regression. God, I want improvement. But this is going backwards. Oh, sometimes you have to go backwards in order to get back into the track. I'm trying to get you on the track. Yeah. It was harder. It took much more time for me to get back on the track. Um, but you can't say you've lost those years. I mean, mm -hmm. maybe you're losing the time mm -hmm. in my perspective I don't say that mm -hmm. I I believe that time didn't exist and mm -hmm. it's um it's an experience it's mm -hmm. um and you live day by day with it um mm -hmm. I know sometimes I wonder like oh you lost so much time <laughs> I'm like, no mm -hmm. I didn't I just lived in the moment there were my choices mm -hmm. um I can't judge myself for my Voices mm -hmm. that's on the path, but right now I'm like mm -hmm. a better self, a better mm -hmm. version of me, mm -hmm. and I can do my make choices right now. Mm -hmm. But I cannot stay suffocating who I was, mm -hmm. judging my choices mm -hmm. back then, because yeah. that would be not living in the now. And mm -hmm. and you yeah. learn the lessons from the past, right? Being the version that I am right now, because uh -huh. back then, like back then, it can be like that I'm right now. You know, like I'm making new choices, uh -huh. and my version of me in ten years uh -huh. would be like, Antonella, what did you do ten years uh -huh. ago? Uh -huh. <laughs> but why would I judge it? It's uh -huh. just, um, it's the experience, right? Mm -hmm. And as again, as as long as you um, follow um, the righteousness that. Mm -hmm. Um, I believe it's in your heart. Mm -hmm. It's all that matters mm -hmm. because God just, mm -hmm. I believe, connects to your heart. 
Borden was blind. I don't just know. Yeah, you, you have an important point. So, um, very important point. So, to God, all right, so uh, we were supposed to study chapter four today, and we just went on talking about chapter five. Chapter four, next week we're going to talk about this. God is seeing a deck of cards. So we're uh, we're living in a finite three-dimensional world, right? Three-dimensional world. Yeah, some people say four-dimensional, um, including the time dimension. So, uh, you know, we see three-dimensionally, right? Uh, you and I, it's sort of like this. We're living in this kind of world. We see from that perspective. And there is a time factor. So time's ticking, believe it or not, it's time, you know, uh, next year, you, you guys are gonna be one year older, true? Um, 10 years down the road, you're gonna be 10 years older, and um, those 10 years will not come back, right? Yeah, so whereas actually, from a Western mindset, you have more of an Eastern mindset. Very interesting. Uh, Western mindset, in general, it's more like, we have so much time, we have time, and we're spending time. And so what you have becomes less and less, yeah? That's the kind of Western concept. Eastern concept is more experience-oriented. Uh, experience um, to God, the past, present, and future, and eternity. What we do, because there's a time factor and we're limited by time and space, our past is past. We can see our past. We're kind of sort of looking at our present, but we cannot see the future. True? Yeah. Now, God can see the past, present, future, and eternity. And, and so, He's seeing everything. And so he says, you're so clean and righteous and I love you. Really, we're righteous? How? Oh, because if you know Jesus, you have been covered by his blood and he sees us covered with Christ and he sees Christ in us instead of us. <laughs> and he says, oh, you're so perfect. I'm not perfect. That's, that's not true. We're not perfect. But God says, you're so perfect. And uh, there's no blemish in you. You're so beautiful, completely. He's seeing from this perspective. Um, we're being sanctified. We're becoming more and more like Christ every day if we're on the right track. <laughs> if you listen to him, if you, if you love him and follow his commands, we're daily becoming more like Christ. Um, as we are becoming more and more like Christ, um, on that day, when we join with Him completely in heaven, we'll be perfect. We'll be perfected. Right? And He's seeing us in our imperfect states, that perfect figure that we'll be in the end. Because to Him, present, future, and eternity are the same. He's not bound by time. He's not limited by time. So then, uh, when I say, oh, I wasted my 18 years, you know, uh, I was so lost. He might say, you know what? Yeah, those, those years will never come back. So there's a sense of loss, for sure. But I make it better. I make it good. I make everything good. In 
instead of you becoming bitter and uh, hold grudge, and it takes it it's of your life instead of that because you have me. I taught you how to forgive, and the, and so you did. That freed up bondages. Now your family is loose. Like as I forgave my family, uh, not only I felt freedom individually, but I started to see the chains were loose. Somehow we were bound by chain, chain, and it was loose now. Even the unbelieving family members, our relationship started to get better. We started to get uh, be reconciled. Yeah. So my relationship right now is pretty decent with all my family. It's a miracle because it wasn't like that before. So um, yes, he he is a mastermind who makes he turns things around. He's a god of reversal. And you're right. I don't want to spend time judging myself or regretting, even regretting. Yeah, I don't want to regret because then it's more waste of time. <laughs> well, I'm regretting. Like rather than doing that, thanking God. Well, so glass half full, half empty. Thank you for saving even at the age of 18. I could have, you could have, you could have found me when I was 60, you know? <laughs> or maybe knowing God at 60 isn't bad. It, it's still a blessing. And because to God, past and present and future and eternity are the same, this person wasting from my perspective, wasting 60 years of God's life, maybe it wasn't a waste. Um, but there is a sense of loss. Um, had he known God, he could have conquered the land with love, message of Christ, message of salvation. He could have been a messenger of God's love and truth for people. That would have been wonderful. But instead, he had to kill so many people and make people die, probably enslaved innocent people. Um, and, and yeah, if he, if he knew God, he became a Christ messenger of love and truth on his deathbed, he would have said, oh, I live my life abundantly, although, because if you if you uh, love people with Christ-like love, you have to give. <laughs> you have to lose yourself. So, oh, you know what? Although I'm a king, I'm a poor king. <laughs> I'm a king, oh, I give power to everyone. <laughs> I'm a powerless king. Oh, I don't even have a palace. I'm living in this like little room um, because I gave everything away for other people's sake. I wanted to help the poor, I wanted to help them to come to know Christ, I wanted to build church. So like, I'm like, I barely have this bed and I'm just like down there. But, oh, my life was full and it was abundant. And uh, I love the Lord with all my heart, all my strength, and my heart is full of joy. And there is crown of glory waiting before me. It could have been a completely different story. So, what kind of story is God writing about your life? And that story is, of course, the sovereign writer. He, he writes our life story. And so the story is still unfolding, but it's up to you how to respond, how you live your life, uh, how that, that story is going to end. Yeah. Because uh, he gives us free will, although he's the mastermind and he has his own plan for us, which is the best for us. And uh, he can make us do things, but he doesn't want to because true love is that i give you a choice i give you a choice either you love me or don't love me 
Daddy comes with goodies and it's like, Daddy, we missed you all day long. That's one choice, but he doesn't twist your arm and say, come on, you'd better uh, let go of TV. Uh, yeah, stop playing with that toy. Come to me, you know. <laughs> So what kind of conditional? Like there are many parents nowadays when uh, they're telling their kids, oh, I give you um, sweets if mm -hmm. you just uh, do that. So that is conditional. Well, yeah. We're conditioning our kids. <laughs> True. <gasps> yeah. Good thoughts. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. I, I recommend it. Mm. But. 그 이제 부모님하고 하는 게 아니라 uh -huh. 모든 사람한테 uh -huh. 우리가 컨디션을 부여하고 yeah. 거기에서 사랑을 받지 않는 그게 문제가 되는 것 같아요. Right. 컨디션만 정하지 않으면 우리는 이미 친할 수 있는 존재인데 oh. 내가 내 컨디션을 선생님한테도 부여할 수 있잖아요. Oh. 그럼 선생님이 그렇게 행동을 안 하면 oh. 나랑 안 맞는 사람이라고 내가 판단을 내리는 게 문제라고 생각해요. 저는 mm. 그러니까 연인 관계도 마찬가지, 가족 관계도 마찬가지. 꼭 우리 아빠가 와가야 와서 왔을 때 우리가 꼭 뛰어나가야 돼. 안 뛰어나갈 수도 있잖아. 그런 날도 있는 거죠. 근데 아. 항상 뛰어나가다고 하는 거는 음. 좀 서로가 서로 감정들이 음. 나빠지지 않나. 뛰어나올 수도 있고 음. 안 뛰어나올 수 있는 날도 있는 거죠. So yeah, our God never does that. 음. He's not, you know, He allows us. Okay, if you want to watch TV, watch TV. 음, 그럴 수도 있는 거고. 그런데 재미 없으면 아빠한테 갈 수도 있는 거고. Yeah, so it's an imperfect illustration. Okay, so but. But ultimately, and so, and all, my illustration is all in front of oh, right, 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 right. um, human relationship and human situations and concepts are cannot really fully describe the heavenly mm -hmm. spiritual mm -hmm. concepts, right? Um, but, but, um, so, so God gives us free will. We can do whatever mm -hmm. we want to, right? But he, he doesn't force us. Mm. Never. He even allows us to go astray and get completely lost. It's not because he doesn't care. He, he does all kinds of things. Okay, I'm going to slip in some hints over here, even in the nature, among people, the books, newspaper, like even billboards. I'm giving you hints. Hints. Mm. Come on, guys. But if you refuse, He's not going to twist your arms and bring you up here. No, he's not going to do that. So it's up to us how the story is written, our life story. Although he has a pen. Oh, come on, I want to write something really nice. Something something about blessings, something about grace, something about love. I, oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, you, you, you're choosing something different. <laughs> so uh, it's a plus. A plus, but then uh, he's giving giving us open arms and saying, "It doesn't matter where you came from, what kind of life you had, mm. what kind of interest you have, what whatever you have done. I love you unconditionally. Mm. I love you with open arms." And he's waiting for us. And isn't that the cross that we're meditating today? Is a Good Friday. Mm. When Jesus was crucified on the cross for your sins and my sins, mm. so that we may know the depth of his love and respond back to him, saying, I love you with all my heart, mind, soul, and strength. Because I know that you love me. And this is right mm. for me to love you back. And it's not because his God is not lonely, trust me. And he doesn't need our money. <laughs> he doesn't need our adoration. He's glory. He's in himself glory. And he is never lonely. Uh, but for our sake, he says, I love you. I die on the cross so that you can be in the right relationship with me. So that you can have an abundant life. And you can have eternal life. <coughs> So we're going to continue next week. <laughs> Hope you
hope you uh, enjoy the rest of the yeah so love the lord your god we weren't able to do like in depth but these are all um, connected so hopefully it makes sense in your strength heavenly father we thank you so much for your um for your grace and mercy and your love thank you for sending your son to die on the cross for our sins so that we can be reconnected to you to be reconciled to you so that we can live a full, meaningful, abundant life on this earth and in eternity. Father God, may you continue to love on us, open our eyes so we can go, we can see beyond this three-dimensional world and that we will seek you and find you. Thank you and cross any pain.